You know, gamers, some say that honesty and integrity are some of the best traits to find in advocates. I mean, after all, the people we choose to stand as champions for our ideals and beliefs should be easily trusted, people we can turn towards and point at to instill a sense of credibility towards the weight of what we say. For example, there's people like Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, the type who embodies the change we want to see in the world. I like to think every cause that exists today has these sorts of figures involved to guide the morals and ethics of those around them. So today, we'll take a moment to look at a few of those figures from the Zoophile community on Twitter. I <laughs> know, I know, they're Zoophiles. People who advocate for raping animals. Certainly people like this can't possibly hold themselves to any significant moral standards, can they? Well, dear viewer, today I'm going to show you exactly how ethical some of these exceptional individuals are. How the people who stand as champions of zoophilia on Twitter are not only engaging in ethical discussion, but open and honest ones. As a matter of fact, we're going to examine some of the ones I have found one at a time, just so you can know exactly how much you can trust each of them. You know, I think I can have you convinced just by pointing at the first person here on our list, not interested. After all, this person has been booming in popularity since creating their account. Over 1,100 followers at the time of recording this. If that's not the pinnacle of what to expect, I'm not sure what is. As one would expect from a beacon of morality, they're all about the safety of humans and animals in consensual relationships, and that goes the same for sexual ones to- What? Wait, one sec, what? What do you mean they tweeted out a fantasy of their dog raping them while they were tied down and had no ability to consent? <laughs> and they called they called this consent too, despite the human, the only person being able to speak and interpret consent, being completely bound and unable to actually consent to anything. Uh, I uh um. <laughs> okay, well uh, let's just ignore that. Uh, okay, let's pretend that consent isn't an argument, and uh, this person is making in any context. Let's just move on. Let's just stop thinking about that. Um, we're gonna move past that, okay? We're just gonna, we're gonna move past that. Well, an important part of advocacy is honesty, and I don't think anybody is more open and honest than not interested. After all, what is an advocate if not the measure of their ethical conduct? Not interested is a person who won't try to use tricksy language to bamboozle others and spread harmful messages, and they certainly wouldn't share those methods to What? They did? <laughs> they, they really did? What do you mean they're spreading zoophile dog whistles around Twitter? Well, <laughs> well, well fuck. Uh, okay, well, uh, we, we need to move past this point. Don't, don't pay attention to that one either. This is, this is just a bunch of bad examples. Ignore everything I've said, and we're just going to move past these. Okay, just move on. If there's one thing I can certainly tell you, though, not interested is absolutely open to the opinions of others. After all, how can you stand as a person who advocates for your beliefs if you'd never even entertain the idea that they, they don't? They're, they're actively gaslighting anti-zoophiles and trying to spin them as closeted zoophiles. Why would, why would they do that? Why, why would they think that would ever work well for them? Why, what is wrong with them? What the fuck? Um, okay, well, I guess not interested is a bit of a bust. Whatever. Let's just talk about other zoophiles. I'm sure their community has somebody better to offer than this creature. On Twitter, Wintergreen Wolf is- w wait, on Twitter? Weren't they fucking suspended? <laughs> why, why are they- okay, so they were deplatformed. It's not really indicative of the community. I mean, they might not even- they do. They, uh, they, they have several ties to the zoo community by their admission, so the zoo community is publicly endorsing somebody who's band evading as an advocate. Okay, well, we're off to a bad start with this one, but, I mean, if the zoo community endorses them, that's enough for me. I mean, if that community of exceptional individuals endorses them, they have to have some pretty compelling arguments, too. Okay, wait. Every argument they're in just... They just tell people to read their pin thread, or they call them a bigot? That, that's... Why, why doesn't he just link them to the thread? 
What do you mean he places the blame onto everyone else because they're being too lazy to go to his profile and gather his proof? <laughs> okay. Well, well, at least he isn't trying to gaslight people like not... He is. <laughs> he is, right? He factually is. I, I don't even know what to say anymore about these two. Let's just toss these two aside. Throw them away. Throw them in the trash where they belong. If anything, let's just say we learned that good advocates with strong ethics don't spread dog whistles or gaslight their opposition. That's your call. I'm pulling the ripcord on talking about these two. I'm done. I'm done with those two. Alright, enough fucking around. Like our late, great, former president Barack Obama once said, Fool me once. Shame on you. But if you fool me twice, then there's a teachable moment. What do, you, what do you mean Obama's not dead? <laughs> what do you mean that's not a quote either? How badly did I fuck up this script? Ugh, whatever. Well, those last two, they were they were bad seeds, just garbage human beings who belong in the trash. But our next person, I know you'll love. Schrodinger's cat. Now there's a name you can support. He's a guy you can always count on to be open and honest with you. Except when you can't, because... He privates his account to delete everything after a fight. Well, that's a tough sell off the bat, isn't it? Um, it's always a rough position trying to talk up a community leader when it, there's not much to work with. Uh, fortunately, though, like a good Boy Scout, I was prepared. My friend and associate, Rally, had an interview with the man, and he has given me the recording of that which I will play for you so that we can get some of his statements and you can get to know Schrodinger's cat just a little bit better and see what a stellar person Schrodinger's cat actually is. As you know, I have a couple of questions, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go straight into it. Um, just just well, gonna that. explain a little bit. So, you know, from your profile, you know, it says that you are a zoophile, of course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, military, you're 20, you know, just your Twitter profile. No, it's yep. pretty nifty. So I'm just going to get on with the first question here. Um, what What's your stance on zoophilia? What's your opinion on it? Well, you know, uh, at this point, I pretty much got my own uh, patented phrase. Uh, if you go through any of my tweets, you'll you'll see it over and over again. I like to say there is nothing inherently wrong with zoophilia. You hear that? There is nothing inherently wrong with zoophilia, and it's patented and everything. Well, color me interested. Let's dive deeper into this. Do you think there's a, uh, there's a significant overlap between the furry community and the zoo community, and if so, why? Uh, you know, um, I think there sort of is. Um, you know, I certainly don't believe that, you know, every fucking furry is a zoo file um i think i think there is a good bit of overlap though i think there is a significant portion of furry who are zoo files i think um because you know furries are inherently you know attracted to some extent to you know animals and you know animal features so I think there's definitely, you know, a lot of room for overlap there. Okay. If you weren't convinced by his constant stammer, then I have some news for you, mister. You're just being obtuse, you know? There's never, you know, a wrong, you know, time to insert, you know, a good, you know, you know, into a, you know, conversation. God, just saying that sentence was empowering. And if, if you're not chock full of confidence now, then there's just something wrong with you. Um... Over the mind. Do you have any data figures or research to verify this by any chance? Or is it just, you know, specul speculative? Uh, it's primarily speculation. I have seen a couple things around based on, uh, like, one or two polls that said, like, I think it was about 8% the poll found. Well, there you have it. A whopping 8 wait, 8%. 8 that doesn't seem very significant. What polls were these? Are we sure he's got a, a reputable source? Can we double check it real quick to see if he has any sources? Okay. Okay, so um, another question. So, mm -hmm. we all know what a uh, pro-C means, which is pro-contact. Which means, yep. you know, they're in favor of contact with, you know, 
This might seem a little bit of a personal question, but are you a pro-contact zoophile? Absolutely. Okay. And he is a proud pro. Wait, what the? F- is that he's pro? He's he's pro contact. Is that it? Fucking is, dude, dude. Kill the fucking interview. Kill the interview. Don't play any more of it. C- can we kill the? Now this is just something I saw on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. it, I, it was referred to Schrodinger, so I suppose that must have been you. Um, it showed one of the Schrodinger accounts actually sending mm-hmm. uh, porn. Well, not porn. A cat or an animal of sorts being vi- uh, well, violated, having sexual intercourse or about to have sexual intercourse with a human, with the tagline "How does this not look like consent?" or something along those lines. Was that you? Yes, that was me, and that was um, taken terribly out of context. Um, so I'll give you the context of what the whole situation behind that was. Um, the person I sent that to was someone I was arguing with about zoophilia Mm. and we had you know a good span of you know dms before that this wasn't just some person i saw on twitter opened up the dms and sent them fucking dog porn um this was someone i was having a debate with and of course they were making you know the argument animals can't consent they don't want to do it it's all rape and i found this specific video um where the dog uh, is very clearly and you know engaged in it is very much playing an active part and uh, I saw the video as very good evidence that animals do uh, in fact in, you know can enjoy acts with a human and so I sent this video as evidence and I said look at this video this dog is clearly you know enjoying it this, this dog is clearly you know into it Hmm. And then they just freaked out. Um, they threw a hissy fit. Ew, gross, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then they, you know, took a screen cap and they threw it out there and just said, this guy is sending me animal porn without any contacts whatsoever. And of course, you know, this lie spread everywhere and everyone was tweeting about it, which, you know, ultimately was good for me um, in a number of ways. Um, got me, you know, more followers, uh, much more exposure. Um, lots of people in my DMs. What <laughs> the absolute shit? You fucking sent bestiality porn unsolicited to prove a point in a debate? Is that even legal? Is he fucking insane? Do we know the other party's age? Has he just confessed to a potential felony? What the fuck is going on anymore? <sighs> you know what? I'm pulling the fuck out of this right here. I'm washing my hands of this whole situation. There is not one morally upright pillar of the zoo community. Not a single one. And I am just going to get the fuck out of Dodge while I can. All I have seen in this video, all I've been able to show anybody, is that zoo files will gaslight people into believing they're potentially rapists like the zoophile community, spreading dog whistles about animal abuse, admitting to being pro-animal rape, sending bestiality to people to prove some kind of asinine fucking point, and actually prove a lack of understanding of the concept of consent. The only thing I have successfully, unequivocally managed to prove in this video is how dishonest these people are, and how many times they try to make you understand how morally grounded they are. But, as we've established, you're not really seeing the truth when you listen to those words from them. I guess you'd really just be seeing them through a glass, darkly.